Hey, hey, welcome back to another video. We're diving back into the Archie Sonic comics again because I like doing it. It's a book that I really enjoy, and I especially enjoy talking about it. Plus, as uh, evidenced by the last video, it gets me them views, apparently. Uh, the story we're going to talk about this time is the first part in the Mobius X Years Later universe. Uh, for the time being, it's the 25 Years Later universe because it takes place 25 years after the where the book had currently been. Uh, and this first story takes place... Uh, in between issues 131 or over issues 131 through 144 so this is, I need you, I need, I want you to remember that this is a 13 part story and this was uh, a thing that Ken Penders was apparently very adamant about uh, it seems to be more or less what his Lara Sue Chronicles is supposed to be semi similar to that universe whenever that actually comes out if it ever does so this is probably and I think this is actually a really good uh, microcosm of Ken Pender's writing as a whole is the first storyline in uh, 25 years later. Now, what would come later to this universe, uh, the second story that took place over 166 and 167 of the main book, and the 30 years later storyline in Sonic Universe that I'm definitely going to be talking about again uh, in the future at some point, those are really good. This first story is not. This is a thing that applies throughout all of Ken Pender's writing. It happened, the Knuck it happened in the Knuckles book, it happened when the uh, Knuckles stories got put as backup stories into the main book, it happens here, is that Ken Penders writes everything unbelievably slowly. In the, like, first 15 or so issues of the Chaos Knuckles storyline that had happened in the main book, maybe 10 issues of content had actually happened. But because he spends a lot of time having characters talk and monologue and say things that they either already know or just say things in such a verbose way, it takes up so much more time and so, so, uh, so little actually happens. 25 Years Later has that same issue, but it's also saddled with the issues of not actually knowing what it wants to do. It does ostensibly have a story, that being that a lot of the zone traveling and time traveling antics that happened during Sonic's heyday, aka the, uh, the days that the actual book was chronicling, messed with all of reality and that reality was breaking down and the universe was in big trouble. They kickstarted that in the first, uh, I think at the end of the first issue of 25 years later, and they did it also in the, uh, more so in the second issue. Now that's a pretty interesting story. You could get a really good couple issues out of that. You'll remember that I said this is a 13 part story. So it'll put, what it does is it'll put the story on hold to just sort of take you on a tour through what the universe is like now 25 years later, which is the thing I'm interested in seeing but you have to learn to balance that with the actual story that is going on. When you look at the actual story, it's not a very... It's not a bad plot, really, ultimately. It's fine. It's one of Ken Bender's better, uh, better storylines. But it's weighed down by the fact that it is 13 parts and maybe four issues of things happen in it. The only reason it's 13 issues is because he took so much time to go around and show you here's everything that's going on. Here's what Sonic and Sally are like. Here's what Sonic and Sally's kids are like. Here's Knuckles' daughter. Here's all this other stuff that is interesting to see, but it interferes with the story, and you're left with a, 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 for, with a plot line that just sort of slogs. Not to mention that when it does finally conclude in issue 144, it just sort of ends. Uh, Sonic and Knuckles, or Sonic stands, uh, steps into a device I can't remember the name of to hopefully try to go back into the past and hopefully fix things. And uh, Lara Sue was also there, and things didn't really get fixed. It just sort of changed the universe, and that was it. It was a, it, it ends with the cosmic restart that basically invalidates the entire story that just happened. Granted, that universe does still matter in the second part of 25 years later that happened, uh, but that was not written by Ken Penders. That was taken over by Ian Flynn, and so I have no idea if Ken Penders actually intended to continue off of that, uh, or if it was anything else. I've heard that it might have been the editors that had him end the story that way, and if that's the case, then I cut him some slack, because it's entirely possible he did plan an actual ending for that. But as it stands, it just sort of stops and doesn't matter then for another few issues. No joke, when I was reading through it, I genuinely just didn't even notice that it had stopped. I was maybe three or four issues after the end of 25 years later and thought, you know, we haven't gotten a 25 years later thing in a while, what happened? And then I went and I looked, and it doesn't continue until 166, where it's the universe reset. So it really doesn't feel like the end. Like I said, it just sort of stops, which is weird. 
very a very anticlimactic end. Now, even though the uh, the base story is pretty good, that's not to say it is without problems, and a lot of those still come with how Ken Penders tends to see the main universe. A problem that is constant in in his writing is tossing aside continuity for the sake of actually writing his stories. He's kind of like the Jeff Johns of the Archie Sonic book, except not as consistently good. The example that I will that I that I use to to show this off the most is how Ken Penders writes Sonic and Knuckles. I talked about this on Twitter, uh, but Sonic and Knuckles are the kind are, are friends. They are the kind of friends that will sling insults at each other, but in no way, shape, or form are they enemies. They have been in the past for any multitude of reasons, but ultimately, they are best friends. Ken Penders seems under the impression that they hate each other and he writes them in 25 years later as constantly bickering and these just these two guys that cannot get along with each other in any capacity which could not be farther from the truth of their relationship granted they butt heads a lot but still they're not full-on arch enemies hate each other kind of thing in this ken penders writes them as working together just because they have to but if they had a chance, they, if they had a choice, they wouldn't bother. Which, as I've said, is just not how the two act. And so you have a lot of Sonic and Knuckles just shouting and yelling at each other, and you have Sally and Julie Sue talking about how Sonic and Knuckles have never really gotten along, which is a complete load. Not, on, not just in the comics, but also in the games, not counting, you know, the times that Knuckles has been tricked by Eggman, but still. That's just a thing that's always, I think, been... 100% wrong about his his writing is that he doesn't really pay attention to actual continuity or character relationships. Uh, I can't immediately remember if it was his idea or somebody else's to uh, make Mina and Tails married in 25 years later, uh, but regardless, it is a thing that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm not going to saddle the blame on him because, like I said, I don't remember if it was him or if that was Ian Flynn later. So we'll just say that that's a thing that exists in the 25 years later universe that doesn't make sense. Most of the other character relationships, you know, they work. Knuckles and Julie Zoo were already a thing. Sonic and Sally, granted, had more or less in the middle of the 25 years later arc been dismantled because of the complete disaster that was issue 134 that, believe me, will get its time. But ultimately, it was a relationship that did make sense. That's really the, the major character dynamic that Ken Penders seems to completely misunderstand, but that he stood by every time he wrote anything. <laughs> you also have one of the major, not really major parts of this story, but still a fairly uh, high-profile character that mattered. You have uh, Knuckles' daughter, Lyra Sue. The way Ken Penders writes her, granted, he's her, like, she's his character, so this is more how he had intended and other writers wrote her a different way that made her better. She's like 16, and she acts like a whiny child. No joke. Knuckles, in the, uh, 20, in the 25 years later timeline, is adamant about not wanting his daughter to be a guardian, that, that, that how there really shouldn't be guardians anymore. Lara Sue's response to this is to lock herself in the bathroom, cry about it, and literally say, I want to be a guardian, like she's four. Ken Penders Lyra Sue is an annoying, whiny brat. And considering that she's supposed to be the uh, the major cornerstone of likely his plans for this entire universe and probably the Lyra Sue Chronicles, it really does kind of dismantle the whole thing. It's hard to care about her because she's horrifically annoying. <laughs> she has a couple of good moments in this, and believe me, later on, I fucking love Lyra Sue as a character. She's one of the best of the uh, Archie Comics original cast but as she's written by ken penders oh man i hate her so much <laughs> I'll, I'll touch more on this probably when i talk about the other part of 25 years later in a separate video but the way i compare uh, ken penders lara sue to how ian flynn wrote lara sue later is ken penders lara sue's greatest weapon is whining until she gets her way ian flynn's lara sue's greatest weapon is chaos control <laughs> that is the best way to illustrate the difference between the two the art throughout the entire book was done mostly by uh, Stephen Butler, I believe. If I'm wrong, then I have a correction on screen, but I'm pretty sure it was Stephen Butler. He's hit or miss. Generally, though, in this storyline, he tends to be pretty good. There's weird faces. There's odd 
uh, odd proportions. The, he, he seems to have a lot of problems with Sonic's eyes, where they'll just generally look kind of strange. But overall, he's one of the better artists the book did have for a while, much as I liked to complain about him. And he does fine on this on this one. I think that's really about all I have to say about this particular part of 25 Years Later. It's a fine storyline if it were four issues or five issues and actually just told its story, but it gets derailed by just taking you on a world tour to show you all these things that are different in the future that are interesting, but definitely should not be the point of this, because they... Uh, something I didn't mention for some reason. They, they stress when they bring up the whole the universe is falling apart thing because of time travel is a, is a very time-sensitive thing. So then when we decide to just screw around and go and look at what everybody's doing and how who everybody's married to and such, it really just kind of defeats the whole thing. It's like we don't really seem to have uh, as little time as we think because we can spend a lot of time just messing around. I do want to give it an, some actual credit. In the second or third to last part, there is a uh, mostly pretty good standalone issue where uh, Knuckles looks back on the uh, the last moments he had with his dad when he died. Much as when I was reading it, I wanted to be snarky about a couple of things. It is generally written pretty well, and I would feel uh, bad making fun of it, considering uh, that particular story was dedicated to Kenneth Penders, which is Ken Penders' uh, dad who had died. I don't I don't immediately remember the uh, the date, but it's not important. Not only would I feel bad generally just snarking on a story that doesn't really deserve it, I would feel especially bad snarking on a story that is dedicated to the memory of a loved one. That issue is particularly good. It's the story in Sonic number 143. If you read only one part of this, read that because it is standalone and it does deserve attention for being a genuinely good Ken Penders written issue. So yeah, that's, that's 25 years later in a nutshell. It's fine. It could have been way better. And it's bogged down a lot by... Uh, just straying away from the main plotline to show things that aren't particularly important. That's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed, then you can subscribe and click that bell icon to be hopefully notified when I upload a new video, but considering some of the things YouTube has done lately, you probably won't be. So, I always post when I upload a new video on Twitter, and the most recent video that I've done is always my pinned tweet on my profile. I also tweet about things that I've been reading or watching. Uh, lately, it's still been a lot of the Sonic comics, so if you're sick of them on my channel already after two videos, prepare to be even sicker of them because I've just been tweeting those. Uh, but in general, it sort of serves as just for me to, to, to talk about random things, and if for whatever reason you want to get a sneak peek of the videos that I'm going to be doing or the things that I'm going to be saying in them, then that's essentially what you can find on there. That's linked in the description, as is my Patreon, which I essentially use as a tip jar because I would feel bad if I was just like, give me money so I can keep reading comic books and playing and watching shit. So it's just a thing that if you want to throw a couple bucks my way, you can, but you don't need to. But if you're new or you've just missed a couple of my previous videos, then on screen right now, you've got two of them. On the left is the last video I did, which was on the Archie Sonic Adventure Adaptations. And then on the right is whatever video YouTube has decided it wants you to watch. That's all for now, and I will see you guys next time.